Good night, fellow punters. The clock on the wall says 22 minutes past eight on Monday night. Good enough day. A little chilly, but it was dry. That was the main thing. And the rain or the frost, I don't think that's going to be as bad as they were saying. Someone said it's going to be minus three or four tonight, but I can't see that happening. But a decent enough day to get off. I like, as you know, to get Mondays off to a good start. It gives us a bit of momentum for the week. But a couple of winners today and a bit unlucky. But a couple of the first one that ran, I picked it thinking that it had took in behind and stay on like it did in its other races. What did they do? <coughs> I thought it was a five furlong sprint for the first furlong. He drifted out like a barge all day, which is not good to see for a George Bowie horse because they are a gambling yard. And we'll get a win out of him. I've no doubt about that. It wasn't to be today. He, If I knew he was going to be that price, I'd have put him up as an each way selection because he was he went out to 10 to 1. Uh, and they were paying four places. Because I hate losing a few pounds on the first bet of the week to the bookies. But we weren't long waiting for Spoof. There was no spoofing about him today. He actually bolted up. Uh, everything was was right for him today. Uh, fish, ground, trip. So he done the business. Returned uh, 2 to 1, I think. But he went out to 5 to 2. Had a little nibble at that before he went off. And triple trade. I had him at 4-1 to one last night and even with the rule 4s he returned 3-1. Uh, to one. Um, I think he has peed at 74 or 13 days. Done it very well. De very decent horse. So that's 2 in a row he has won for us. Fast becoming a uh, bus favourite. And then the reason I picked what's up with you was ground. The ground went against it. He was desperate and lucky not to get in the first three because I had the four of them together in an accumulator, but I had a an each way lucky fifteen as well. So I made a few pounds anyway, that's the main thing. So hopefully it can continue through the week. Um tricky enough day tomorrow. Uh there's two I get out of the way first before I go to Punchestown. Uh the three o'clock at uh, Epsom I thought educator for Willie Haggis I'd be hoping that this would be better than an 80 well it's 90, 90 now it went up from 87 was it yeah it started off 85 but it won first time out last year in Newmarket over 10 furlongs Um. Throughout the last run, it was a mile and a half. It was very unlucky uh, in the ground. It sort of went against, I thought, in uh, that was in Salisbury, wasn't it? But I thought that might be worth a bet tomorrow in the city and suburban handicap. There was another one that sort of interests me, but uh, Alan King, it's uh, Alan King's at the 3.35. But the yard isn't just clicking. I think he's only... One for 22 or something recently. But there's one in Fast Last for the UK jump followers. Bumpy Johnson. There's a two miles four horse on good to soft ground. That's his conditions tomorrow. He's gone up seven pounds. He went up three pounds actually for his last run, but he, he got up seven for winning in Fast Last. Uh, so this is the same course and distance tomorrow. I thought he'd done it pretty reasonably. He needed every yard of it, but he's not a three miler because he went at three mile the last day and it was too far for him. Then follows zero tolerance, Watergrange, Jack. That's him in the red hat. 
oxygen, the making Brachean their colors. efforts from off the pace as they close in on the third last. Isam will rise in front of Militaire, who had every chance. Bumpy Johnson jumped into third from Jaunty Viking. Turning gold is weakening on the inside. Bally Disco is staying on behind the leading quartet. Oxygen with running to do. Water Grange Jack trying to stage a rally. It's Isam and Militaire from Bumpy Johnson. Bally Disco into fourth as they went over two out. Militaire more fluent than Isam. And now it's Militaire who takes over Bumpy Johnson within striking distance. Bally Disco continues to stay on towards the leading trio as they come down to jump the last. Isam back in front at the final flight. Bumpy Johnson with every chance. Militaire backing out of it. Bally Disco about to go third. It's Bumpy Johnson who hits the front halfway up the running and will win. He ran in a three mile race after that. Um... It was one as you'd think it'd suit, but it didn't actually. Sweet will, but it was a class two. Back to last day then at Exeter, and he actually got outstayed, but it was um, the, the last furlong and a half was the difference. Two and a half is his is, is optimum, I thought, but he's in each way bet uh, tomorrow. So there's two outside of Punchestown. Uh... I'm going to do this now because where I have my button up there, there could be problems. I don't want any problems, but enough of them. The first race at Punchestown, that just always be the over the banks. Why have they changed? I think that's the last race uh, tomorrow evening. Just be always the first race. Or am I getting it wrong? Um, night and day is the choice of Paul Townend from Willie's yard. But he ran terrible the last day. So I don't know what to expect from him. He had won uh, a race before that in, in Clonmel over on heavy ground. But he was pulled up in that in Ashford Diamonds race there in the Fairy House. I thought the best of Willie's tomorrow might be uh, C'est la Vie. Uh, we have Model Kingdom there as well. We're back that a few times farther back. But I thought the choice of this would be... Uh, she could be anything. Let's hope she is tomorrow. I think the trip and the ground at two miles, um, she was up near the pace and she was a bit of toe. She was sixth the last day in uh, the Mayor's Novice Hurl. This is her with the yellow sleeves on the beat in a few lens. Um, as I was saying, C'est La Vie has won on the course before. Um, in the Merton Pipe, it ran the last day. It was at the back of the pack and it made a couple of mistakes, particularly I think at the second hurdle, it could have been the first. And it, it showed, um, it made good move um, on the very left, of the, on the wide outside, um, coming up to two out. And it didn't stay. Uh, th that would be a an each way bet, and I think in that race as well, uh, um, because it won in, in, in over the track on yield and ground. Soft ground would have been against it because when it won before it won its bumper on good ground in Clan Mel and then it was it won again in, in uh the more I look at it I think that that's a, a, a definite each way bet actually. Um I was looking at it this evening. Celevi is fifteen to two. Like they're playing four places there in a few bookies. That'd be a sort of an each way bet to nothing, I would imagine, tomorrow. Uh, the 4.15 is the Novice Hurl, grade one. Fasal Vega. Uh, what to expect again is another thing. But I'm going to do Diverge without the favourite. I forgot to get the price. Oh, here we go. My price is up here. 10 to 11. 
I thought that uh, ran very well the last day and a slightly raced. It was only just behind it and I have to move it forward a little bit tomorrow. It was only two and a half lengths behind the last day. Lightly raced. The 450 is a handicap hurl. I have two backed in this this morning. Brazil, I think, is a good each way bet. This won the Boodles last year. It had one bad run there. Uh, it was look, no looking back. It was two to nine favourites at the time, but no looking back. Has turned out to be a pretty decent uh, horse after all, and it it beat Field Door second to Champ Kylie, like you know. In uh, but the last day, it ran on the flat, and it looks like that was just a, a pipe opener for this. But have a look at it. It's in the white cap, towards the back. Garden and then critical, less than two to race. Timurid comes to tackle La Dame Blanche on the inside. Crystal Clear, Dalvi starting Monday. New Hill out on the wide outside. Wild Dollar is staying on, but Timurid, the new leader, as they pass the furlong pole. Crystal Clear in the centre, down the outside. New Hill, Wild Dollar wider still. Well inside the final furlong. Crystal Clear getting on top. Timurid over on the far side. New Hill, Wild Dollar down the wide outside. Crystal Clear, a winner here on Sunday, follows up. Wins from Timurid second, Wild Dollar third, New Hill, and La Dame Blanche. That should have blown off the cobwebs, you'd imagine, for tomorrow. Uh, it was 8-1 to one earlier. It's 7s now. Um, it was 8 with William Hill this morning. Um, tax for Max was third in this last year. He was 20s this morning. He's into 10s. Um, it's yeah, third to Felix Deasy. But the last day in Fairy House, we backed it actually the time in uh, Punchestown. Uh, we got our money back, didn't we? Because they were paying six. Or in, not in Punchestown, in Leperstown. He looked all over the winner coming up. The, that was the day against Gaelic Warrior. But the last day it ran. Rick's risk bells race he's on the rail here the cap of glory on the outside and the mineer colors with the lead in between the double green his nephew with shan raw racing onto their heels as little mix up as they meet up with flight number three that's for jaha just leading the cap we'll just move it forward a bit now follow the horse uh -huh. In the lead from Captain's nephew, Shan Rowe. Right with him is the Capo Glory. One is all in his little mix-up. As they jump this flight at the halfway stage. It's Wajaha. It was only about a half Glory a length down. Mix up next, he loses position here. He goes back a little. Start cap. Look where, and his look where he finishes up now. Taking over from the Capo Glory. Hey, Johnny. Shan Rowe, little mix-up. Jazzy Matty is arriving on the outside. Then wrist bell, Ballyborn Belter closing his match. His last of the group coming on the turn Mont for Bank home. Park, Aronso, Derry, Magna, Glory, the final flight, Montbeg Park. Just the leader from Rispel, Aronso, Derry and Magna, Glory. Inside the final, 150 yards locked together. Rispel on the inside of Montbeg Park. Precious in between them. And it's Montbeg Park edging it from Rispel. Aronso, Derry in third. Not too busy on him that day. I was looking at him thinking that uh, this was probably the plan. He's into eights now, nines. He was 20s this morning. Uh, I think they're paying. They were my two against the field, but the prices have, have, have sort of slipped. But yeah, they're paying six places and a couple of bookies there. Five was a few of them. They'll be the two selections. I always sort of pick two in a, in a handicap hurdle race like that. Then the, the big race of the day, the grade one, and Ergamine will, will, will most likely win it. Without an Ergamine, I thought maybe 
Shakam Porsoir. It was second in the same race last year. It won it the previous year at Bet Alaho. It likes the track. It could pop out in front there tomorrow, and they mightn't be watching it. And at 10 to 1, 11 to 1, that'll be my bet in that race tomorrow without the favourite. Uh, that he just he likes the track and they just might take their eye off the ball and let him off there tomorrow. He's been up and trip. It could revitalise him back to his uh, to two mile there tomorrow, back on a track that he likes. Danny likes to front run. It could be the front runner there tomorrow. I'm just trying to read between the lines, trying to make a pound. On to the bumper. Now this is real guessing stuff altogether. But there is money for a horse that I have picked, I see, because it's nine to one earlier there. It's Farland. It's a half brother to Manila Crooner. And it's a brother to uh, Bally Morris Rose. The dam is Ascana. And Ascana won uh, seven of seventeen races. And as I say, an ounce of breeding is worth more than a ton of feeding. That was my selection. I saw there is money for it in the last. I, I was looking at these not about an hour ago. Um, there's another well bred horse there as well. Uh, Step Out. It's a half brother to uh, Sebastopol. But that's what uh, by walk in the park. But I had uh, that one of uh, Sean Doyle's picked. At nines, they're paying four places in some bookies there. But there is money for them. That's significant, I would imagine. Uh, the 6.35. The grade one three-miler. Willie has one four in it, hasn't he? Four, yeah, but the race. This was in uh, Beginner's Chase in Gordon Park last November. Son of market rival Journey with me, the half jagged and classic getaway in What Do You Want? In line for the final three fences, Manila Cocooner in the darkish colours and white cap. Over by two legs to Journey with me. Who's trying to challenge Classic Getaway is moving in between them as these go on from what you want the second last. And it's Manila Kakuna from and Journey with me, he's a faller. Manila Kakuna chased to the final fence by stable companion Classic Getaway, both horse and rider quickly up. It's Manila Kakuna over the last join by Classic Getaway. Not the best of landings by Manila Kakuna and has relinquished his long time advantage over Classic Getaway. It's Classic Getaway who is straight off the mark over fences, beating Manila Kakuna. Hasn't ran since, but Willie would imagine throwing him into uh, a grade one will have him fit. Danny is on him again. Uh, Paul Tomlin chooses to appreciate that. Dar Jacob is on James de Burley. But he had a journey with me cooked that day when it, uh, when it fell to out. Uh, it hasn't ran like in that length of time, but um, that was bought for five hundred and seventy thousand. Um, by Cheverly Park, it's, it's only a seven-year-old, so that'd be my selection in that race. The it's an open betting affair. Seventy-two, four to one. Where are you going here? This was the race that you should be always on first. Vital Island won this last year. Train especially for the race again. It's favourite. Um, you have to respect in the bulger over the banks and the cross country to Nordener. But uh, the market is looking that way, that it's uh, the favourite again. And the other bumper, I've no great opinion on it, to be perfectly honest. And if I do, 
hear of anything uh, tomorrow i'll put it up in uh, in the description later in the day so i have a still have tickets for tomorrow i got no uh there was a man taking too often but he left a message there a while ago saying that he's going fishing or something so he can't go uh i've two tickets are free they're 35 euros each if anyone wants to leave them in the comments otherwise i'll try and give them to somebody outside and i have uh, a reserved enclosure ticket that's worth 45 quid as well it's for nothing if somebody wants it and i'll be back i'm going racing tomorrow i'll be back tomorrow night at some stage I'll spend the next hour now going through the Wednesday's card and uh, see can we make a pound. Uh, bash the bookies over and out.